Let's do two examples to illustrate how to factor our uh, transfer functions and list out the corner frequencies. Here we want to take s plus 0.1 and divide by 0.1, which means that to keep everything balanced we'll need to multiply by 0.1. We'll also want to group 100 with the uh, second order term, which means we need also to divide by 100. Uh, this 0.1 divided by 100 is going to give us 1,000 times s to the 0. That's the uh, at pure s term. And then we have two first order terms here. So if we list out our corner frequencies, we have a corner frequency of 0.1 in the numerator. And we have a corner frequency of omega n equals 10 in the denominator. And this is a second order, so we need to put two down arrows there. We also need to pick a starting point, and the starting point much smaller than 0.1 might be 0.01. And if we plug in 0.01 uh, times s to the 0, we're just going to get 1 over 1,000, in other words, 0 0.001. And we'll also get a phase of 0, all from this first term here. For the second term, we have a 1 over s, we have an s plus 10, which we'll divide by 10 for, which means I put a 10 over here, and then we also need to multiply by 100 and divide by 100, so I need 10 over 100. So I end up with 1 tenth times 1 over s times these two terms here. If we list out the corner frequencies, we have a corner at zero with a we have a corner at zero with a down arrow. We have a corner at ten with an up arrow, and then we have a corner at a hundred with a down arrow. The starting point, again, we want to choose as the smallest non-zero corner. That's going to be ten, and we want to be much smaller than that. So maybe we'll choose one. And m one and phi one are going to take on values of. If you plug in uh, omega equals 1 in here, you'll end up with 1 tenth. And because we have a, d d a zero, uh, an s in the denominator, uh, we need a phase of negative 90 degrees because we need negative 90 times n. Starting with this first example, uh, we already knew that we had a starting point at 0 0.001 at a frequency of 0.01. So we started right here, and we had a starting slope also of 0. So we have an asymptote that's just a straight line. And then when we hit 0.1, we need to have an asymptote that starts having a slope of positive 1. And then when we hit 10, which is uh, up here, uh, we're going to then uh, have a minus 2 change in slope. So that means that we had a plus one slope here, and that means that we need a minus one slope over here. So this is minus one. Similarly, we're for phase, we said that we're going to start off with zero phase, and then at point one, we're going to head towards uh, 90 degrees. And then when we hit 10, we're actually going to have a uh, two down arrow, so we need to have a change in phase of 180 degrees, and this is what we end up for the asymptotes. This is enough information for us now to sketch in the, uh, the actual values, and I'm just going to draw in these curves here that roughly try to follow the asymptotes. And then if you're curious what this difference is between this corner an actual value here, we had a first order change, and so this is going to be 3 dB, or you could say that it's going to be whatever this asymptote's value is multiplied by square root of 2. So that would be about 0 0.00141 for the square root of 2 for that point right there. This one is a little bit tougher because this is actually a second order change. And the zeta for this uh, was actually uh, equal to 1. And so if we evaluated 1 over 2 zeta, that's going to give us a value of 1 half. So we need to take this value, 0.1, at the corner. 
and we need to multiply it by half. So this would actually be about 0 0.05. And if you recall, we said that 0 .0, uh, that basically at one-third intervals, that's where you would have 0 0.02 and 0 0.05. The phase plot is a little bit easier because we just have to roughly follow these curves and spend about a, mag a factor of 10 in order to transition between them. Let's continue our second example where we had a starting point of frequency 1 and a magnitude of 1. And we said that that has, starts with a slope of minus 1. So that means that it's going to be heading down like this until we hit 10, in which case uh, we are going to have a change in slope of plus 1. So in other words, the slope changes to uh, 0. And then when we hit 100, we're going to have another down arrow. So that means we're going to head down again with a uh, slope of minus 1. As for the phase, we start off at negative 90 degrees. And then at frequency 10, we're going to head up to 0 degrees, stay at 0 until 10, and then we're going to head back down to negative 90 degrees. Next, we can sketch in the values where we're going to have uh, follow the asymptote. We're going to skirt slightly above it here, and then skirt uh, slightly below the corner over here. And then if you wanted an approximation for these values, this is going to be, again, about plus 3 dB. In other words, 0 0.01 multiplied by square root of 2, which will give us uh, 041. And then this is going to be about minus 3 dB from the corner. So it's going the other way. And then the value here would be 0 0.01 divide by square root of 2, which would give us 0 0.0707 approximately. Then here we're just going to sketch in uh, the curves, coming pretty close to reaching our asymptotes, and then going back down again. Let's do another example, this time from start to finish, where we have 1 over s squared. We have s squared plus 0.2s plus 1 divided by 1, so that does nothing to the left. And then we need to multiply by 20, which means that we're going to divide by 20. So over here, we're going to have 0.05s to the minus 2 for that uh, first term. If we list out our corners, we end up with 0 with two down arrows, because we started off uh, with s to the minus 2. We have 1 in the numerator with two up arrows and then we have 20 with a down arrow. The next thing we want to do is pick a starting point and we need to pick something much smaller than our lowest non-zero corner so let's pick point 0.1 which is much smaller than 1. If you plug in point 0.1 that's going to be uh, point 0.1 raised to the minus 2 is going to be 100 times 0 0.05 gives us 5. Our initial phase because we started with two down arrows is going to be equal to negative 180 degrees. Next I'm going to draw in some axes for m and phi. And the tick marks are going to be at point 0.1 and 1 and 10 and 100. And actually I need, uh, I'll need 5 in here so I'm going to actually go above 1. Uh, if you want these in dB, this is 0, minus 20, uh, minus 40, minus 60, uh, etc. And we also are going to need a couple intermediate values. So we need 5, which are, if you call 2 and 5 are roughly one-third intervals on a log-log scale. We'll also need 20, which again we can use this uh, one-third interval rule. So we need to be at 5 at point 0.1 and then we need a slope of minus 2 and so the way I can figure out where that's going to be is to go down two divisions and so here's my slope of minus 2 
we at one we need to switch slopes to zero because we have two up arrows for, so we go from minus two to zero and then at 20 we need to have another uh, one that goes down so we need to heading have a slope of minus one starting at 20. As for the phase, the phase is going to start at negative 180 degrees. So I need 0 degrees, I need negative 180, and then I'm also going to use negative 90 degrees for phi. So we start at negative 180. When we hit our uh, tick mark, our corner at 1, that's when there's going to be a change. And so it's going to head up to 0. And then at 20, it's going to head back down to minus 90. Next, let's sketch in our uh, curves. And for that, it'll help to know what zeta is. And recall that when we said that you have s squared plus 0.2s plus 1, where zeta is equal to 0.1, we said that this is equal to 1 over 2 zeta, which uh, in that case would be 1 over 0.2, in other words, 5. Well, for the current system, this is actually inverted. So I actually need this, one-fifth. So if we were to draw in what happens at this corner frequency, we would multiply whatever you see here by one-fifth. So this was already 0.05. So when we multiply by one-fifth, we're actually going to be down here. So here I am trying to draw in the asymptotes and then what I need to do is deviate from our asymptote hit roughly 0.01 and then head towards this asymptote again not quite hit it because we're gonna start steering towards the other asymptote this difference here is due to a first-order uh, corner this is just going to be minus 3 dB and considering this value all along here was 0.05, we know that that's 0.05 multiplied by 1 over square root of 2. So it's going to be something like that. As for the phase, that's a little bit easier to draw, and we just need to roughly head between the asymptotes.